All right, guys, so it's 4.30 in the morning. Uh, we're getting, I've been driving around the parking lot a little bit with it, so hopefully it holds. I got 193 miles to go. I'm gonna be stopping at every single rest area. I doubt I'm even gonna make it to the first one. But I got a full tank of fuel and uh, some determination. So let's get this party on the road, I guess. All right, so I found out exactly what happened, how the situation happened. I was able to reenact it and figure out what exactly happened to why the drive shaft failed yesterday. So, seven o'clock in the morning, as you can see, I, I made it from the pilot. I drove around the parking lot like 10 times just first, second, third, just going back and forth and everything, and everything was good. The second I go to put it in first gear and I let off. So basically, I'm accelerating in first gear and I let out in first gear. That is what shattered the ears on the, uh, on the drive shaft. So that is good to know at this point. So accelerating isn't an issue, cruising isn't an issue, but if I put it in first gear, and I decide to let out, like what happened yesterday, some guy cut me off, I let off in first gear, and all that backlash, all that load on it, that's what ultimately did it. Um, so now now we're finally getting answers, I, that's a fact. That's basically where we're at, is it could not handle the load of letting out in first gear and letting the entire weight of the truck, trailer, and everything hit the shaft. So we're at the point now, I'm on Marketplace now, I've found three parts trucks. I'm looking for a factory drive shaft from one of these trucks. I can actually show you guys what ended up happening. So it's a good thing I did what I did yesterday, just to see. But basically, um, I'm gonna take this to the drive shaft shop when I get home. Um, basically, this whole end's gonna need to get cut off and they'll re-weld the new one on, this guy here. And then we'll just have to know that for future reference is if I'm ever gonna let out in first gear, I absolutely need to push the clutch in. Like that is what's gonna happen. I'm glad that I tried this out that way just to see you know, if it would work and whatnot. Um, it was working great. If I would have just drove it, it would have been fine. I didn't know that letting out in first was gonna be the issue, but I'm hoping that one of these guys on Marketplace comes through. I don't see the other piece of the drive shaft anywhere, so probably, I don't know. I looked for it, but yeah, not a big deal. I'm gonna go get the other piece of the drive shaft back off. We will get this fixed. We will recover from this. It just kind of sucks. This is actually by far the worst thing that's happened ever. I've never in my life, and I remember I ran power only before, which was a ton more miles. I have never in my life had a breakdown that actually cost me to be late or do anything like that. This is the first actual legit breakdown in the truck ever. So I had that starter go out in California. Mind you, the starter had like 500 something, 490 some thousand miles on it. And even that, I was still way early for my pickup. Really sucks. This is the first time this truck's actually physically broke down and caused me to be late. So we'll see if we can recover from it. And for the guys saying, oh, you should have your four wheel drive fixed. No, I don't want four wheel drive. Absolutely not. Oh, you could go drive to a, a, an area. Dude, I'm at a pilot. Where am I gonna drive to? I'm loaded to 24,000 pounds. I'm gonna destroy a transfer case doing taking some of the advice at some of these people no don't put it in four wheel like empty's fine but yeah i'm not gonna i've done that before no i don't want four wheel drive i want nothing to do with it i pull a trailer half the hotshot guys that have a have a trailer none of them use four wheel drive every one of them will tell you you need it not one of them have used it it's just one of those things if you're in power only you'll probably need it but not for a trailer so we're gonna get this situated. We're still gonna try to drop off today. We're still gonna try to pick up tomorrow. Hey, look, there goes law enforcement. He doesn't even give a shit. So, great. All right, so if you don't experiment, you're never gonna learn new things. And that trying that yesterday, on the la as you guys saw in the last video, I am so glad that I did try that. I have found, f ooh, cracked my shoulder. Four guys now on Marketplace, with, and one of them actually has a 72 inch aluminum drive shaft and I've messaged all four of them, three at five in the morning and one just now at 7.30.
and I'm really hoping that one of them come through. I'm really hoping I can get that one piece shaft because he wants 150 bucks for it and it's a 72 inch. It just needs U-joints and whatnot. So that's easy enough. Really hoping that he comes through. That would be awesome. Oh, but good God, I'm tired. I had like, I don't know, I think I slept for like four hours, but I'll let you guys know uh, when, when it comes. All right, we're getting another guy to pull us into a spot. A semi with a trailer, he's gonna pull us, so. We'll be back into a spot. Of course, it's gonna get busy. So we had a semi come up and he was actually gonna do it. And then somebody else actually came up at the same time with a Ford Explorer, so we're, we're pulling her now with that. So we're gonna do this again. We got two leads, two of them didn't work out. One guy said it was not available and the other guy he said uh it was an automatic one we tried to take some measurements but it did not work out so we got one with a, a drive shaft available yeah. so hopefully this guy answers any of them spots is fine all right thankfully he pulled me in now we're in the shade now we got some time to think and hopefully somebody on marketplace messages me back because we found a drive shaft for 150 bucks. I didn't expect to have a, I didn't expect not to have a drive shaft yesterday. Uh, today is now Sunday. Officially the longest by far breakdown that I've ever had. I have never had a breakdown that lasted this long, ever. The most I've ever broken down for was a couple of hours. So this is the first. We have a one piece, or two piece drive shaft coming, a steel two piece drive shaft with bearing and when I get back to Pennsylvania, I'm gonna go get my drive shaft fixed, and then um, I'm gonna put the aluminum one back in, and then I'm gonna have the steel one gone over just to make sure everything's good, so that way everything is done correctly. And yeah, so basically, um, I think I told you guys why it actually happened. I was pulling out of here basically, and uh, I was in first gear, you know, clutch in, yada yada, just cruising, and I let off. I let off the throttle, and when I tell you, when you're in first gear with a load like this behind you, the truck, the the engine just stops. So while the truck tries to keep going, it literally will force you like this. Like, you'll feel it, the whole load and everything. And letting out in first gear with 24,000 pounds gross, it just, all of the weight went through the driveline and found the weakest point, and that was the weakest point. That's why this broke. Um, I wasn't accelerating. I wasn't um, pretty much anywhere. This happened almost at like, I'd like to say seven miles an hour and I just let off. And then you feel the whole truck just jerk forward. And that's how it's always done that when I'm loaded. It's always done that. You're going from peak power to nothing. So for anybody saying, oh, you're accelerating too hard, this and that, no, absolutely not. I am always easy on accelerating in this truck. I have 514,000 miles on this transmission. It has nothing to do with my driving, I'm telling you that now. And I float everywhere. Everything is smooth, and it's just one of those things. It was a freak occurrence. Somebody cut me off, I had to stop. I didn't think about pushing the clutch in because I was just gonna get right back on it, and apparently the drive shaft just isn't rated for that. Ideally, I'd want a one-piece steel drive shaft, but the reason I got the aluminum drive shaft was for the deal that I got, but in an automatic, this would never happen. In a stick shift, you can shock the transmission or the drive line in a, in a manual easier than you can in automatic so that's why this happened but we do have one coming i found one for 400 bucks michael has uh on instagram michael has been a super huge help uh we found one 400 i spent all day yesterday on marketplace messaging so many different people and found one for 400 bucks and he's bringing me an ac bracket the new fitting for the coolant sensor so we won't have any coolant leaks anymore. And it's just gonna ultimately be a really good day. So I'm gonna go get a shower because as you can see, I'm a little greasy. So go get some new pants, get a new shirt, maybe some socks, and we'll go from there. But it's it's gonna be a good day. Let's put it that way. Alan, is that you? Who wants merch that says, where are you, Alan? I haven't heard anything from that guy. Michael should be here in a little bit. We got the drive shaft coming. So we have a 2006 drive shaft. So we got, I, I think the bearings are better in the 2006s than they are the 2004s. So I still need to get to an O'Reilly's and return the two that I actually have. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we have a 2006 drive shaft, upgraded carrier. I know, not the greatest looking thing. It's rusty, 
Uh, I'm gonna get that reconditioned after I get this one fixed. But for 400 bucks, I guess it was kind of a ripoff, but you know what, I need to get back on the road. And then whatever, whatever Mike wants for coming out. Definitely a better guy than Alan. All right, sorry, I didn't film much, but we have a two-piece drive shaft. It is installed, can confirm. A 2006 drive shaft will fit in a 2004 as long as it's from a manual. The carrier bearings will just be different, but they'll still bolt up just the same. So that's great. It's a little rusty. We did have to do a bunch of work to the inside of the shaft uh, where it goes into the transfer case because it wouldn't fit. So we had to break a ton of rust loose and whatnot. But beggars can't be choosers. We got to get back on the road. So you guys will see, I need to take the aluminum drive shaft. I'm going to go get that one refurbished. Hopefully made stronger if we can do that. And then we are headed to do our drop-offs. Two hours and 45 minutes away. We'll be there by about quarter after seven. So let's get the show on the road. But let me show you guys. Got ourselves a shaft. We're good to go. Now you guys are probably wondering, why do I like a one-piece drive shaft so much? Well, automatically I feel a difference with the two-piece. It feels a little bit more sluggish just because there's a little bit of flex in the drive shaft. There's a little bit more noise, a little bit more vibration. I can definitely feel that. With the bracket on there, there's a lot more rust that's held in, moisture, uh, there's extra things, there's more bolts, and more things that need service ultimately. I like Chevy's idea with their one tons. They use a one piece steel drive shaft, okay? And they don't have problems with them. So there's nothing wrong with a one piece drive shaft on a one ton truck. These are too small a trucks to be using a two piece shaft. There's just no need for it. So I understand you got, it definitely need to be made stronger, but I definitely feel a vibration now. If it wasn't there, you know, I'm super happy to be moving, but unfortunately I just called on the van. Apparently I can't drop it until tomorrow anyway. So that kind of sucks. Uh, he said he won't be up until 9.30 at the business. So that really blows. But I will be dropping the car in about half an hour. So that makes me happy. That's 9.50 going down. Then we'll get paid 1,900 when I drop the other one. And then we got, yeah, I can't wait to go pick up the other two. They should be, that's like 3,900 bucks going up to Minnesota. And then we'll be heading home. I got an appointment scheduled to get my AC recharged. Uh, I might might try to fix the AC tonight as like a temporary, but we'll see. I might buy one of those cans and just see if I can't get it working. But I think the guy's like another two hours down, so not a big deal. I also will take the van tonight and we're gonna I'm gonna try to put it as far back on the trailer as possible. So that way tomorrow when it's time to unload it, I can just quickly, you know, a couple minutes get it off. So That'll be great. Like in the two-piece drive shaft, by the way. Absolutely can feel a difference. I hate it. But again, beggars can't be choosers. I'm happy to be rolling. Thanks, Mike, for coming out and helping me. So, much appreciated. Damn, these guys got waterfront property and everything. Look at that. We're almost here. We're like two minutes away, about a half a mile. I don't think I'm supposed to be on this road because I barely cleared that corner. But you know what? It's a pretty thin road. Nice scenic view. There she is. Didn't touch at all. Look at that. So close, but so far. So happy to finally be getting one of them off the trailer. Oh man. Well, there she goes. Let's see. This guy's tight. Put that in there. Put that up there. So we're gonna go find out which way to go and then go from there. I might put this AC bracket on tonight. I don't know yet, but I got the appointment scheduled to have to have AC. So let's go up by the damn water. What a day! Road subject to flooding, obviously, but I don't know. Maybe I'd live here until a chunk of the earth goes into the ocean. 
Okay, guys, wasn't the most entertaining thing in the world today. Today kind of, you know, it was good. I wish that I could drop the, the load off tonight, but he wants to wait until the morning because he's like, oh, my business doesn't open until 9.30. Who the, whose business doesn't open until 9.30 in the morning? But he did say he was a good while away, so whatever. Um, I'm gonna go mess with the load back there. So, looks like there's, I don't know, is there plenty of light for you guys? Doesn't look like it, but I think I'm gonna try and get this, you know, back a little further. So we'll see, we'll see how this goes. All right, there, we should have enough light now. So we're gonna get these chains off and uh, try to get this thing to roll backwards as far as possible. All right, so we're actually doing it. I got the chains, the binders off. I'm gonna turn the lights on for the Amazon van so you guys can see a little bit better. So, because it actually does have power. After letting it idle for how long? Would you just look at it? We're gonna pull it back. I got two come alongs. We'll see if that does it. If not, I'll have to go back to the drawing board. Turns out once it's in neutral, which doesn't matter, it's in it's in park, but that wheel in the front's gonna spin anyway. Just come along. Look at that. No effort. That works great. So it looks like tomorrow is not going to be a big deal. I should start using these come alongs more often. They're basically like baby winch cables. guys so this thing actually moves pretty damn nicely all the wheels roll and everything and you see that we have the skate underneath of the oil pan and underneath the, the control arm but somebody complained because I winched this up um, did towing for how long and obviously there's a skate under there but at the same time no extra damage was done to this this is wood if you think you're gonna damage an oil pan by dragging it across some wood you should not be towing. Also, someone else mentioned about um, strapping above the suspension. Most of the time, we don't do that. You always strap below the suspension. If you look at car haulers, they always strap below the suspension, okay? That's just how we do it. Yes, you can collapse the suspension by putting it above it, but if you're doing transport like this with a trailer or a car hauler, you're not ever going to strap above the suspension, so. That's basically gonna do it. Uh, this thing's where it needs to be. I might take some air out of the bags. I might leave it, I don't know. But aside from that, these uh, reverse lights are pretty damn bright. I wish my marker lights worked, but when we get back, we have some money to spend on. I need to get mud flaps and I have a tailgate waiting for me and I don't know what I gotta do about the rear bumper yet. But yeah, this is basically where it's gonna sit. This actually moves pretty dang easy and that's pretty much gonna do it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. See you in the next one. Safe travels. See ya.